Good morning. I'd like to welcome all as we gather for worship here at the Moravian Church. For those of you who are here today and those who are worshiping with us online, it's a blessing to be together as we gather for worship with our God. Uh, just a few announcements. Uh, uh, let you know, uh, please, uh, this month is the month to sign up for our financial commitments for the coming year, and those forms are in the bulletin, and you can leave those back in the back or uh, send them to the office. Uh, next Sunday, we'll be in passing out the Operation Christmas Child boxes, so you can start thinking about that as well. Um, also, we're hoping to begin Coffee Huss again here very soon, so if you want to help out with that, uh, the sign-up board is in the... Uh, the fellowship room, so please go in and plan on taking a Sunday to help out with that. Uh, also, next Sunday, we're, we're very excited. Uh, we're going to have a guest here, R Reverend Greg Barron, who is uh, beginning a new ministry of the province in Green Bay called We Belong, um, is going to be here to share a little bit about the vision of that ministry. So he's going to be sharing a little bit in worship. Um, he's also going to be providing special music, and also then immediately following worship, he's got a presentation to make. And I know some of our young people are aware of this new ministry because um, uh, he was at church camp this summer. So we look forward uh, to being with Greg, and uh, it's a Thursday night game, so you can stay after church next Sunday, okay? So, um, and then finally, uh, a correction to the schedule, we are not having youth fellowship this week. We're uh, taking a Halloween break, so no youth groups this Wednesday. With that, let us now prepare our hearts to be in worship together. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us and we are his. We are his people. We are the sheep of his pasture. Let us stand as we sing together our opening hymn, number 520 in the Moravian Book of Worship.
Please remain standing as we turn to page 13 and pray together the Liturgy for Reconciliation. above all. You alone are God over the nations of the earth. Even the planets, the stars, and the galaxies are placed by your hand. God of all creation, we sing praises to your name. We stand jubilant before your glory, power, and beauty. God of certainty, God of truth, our confidence is in you and in you alone. Yet we live in a fallen world, and we are an imperfect people. Our world is filled with pain and alienation. We know of illness when body or mind is failing, and the loneliness of spirit it brings. We know of separation from the parent to the child, from the friend to the neighbor, and the emptiness of life it brings. We know of strangeness in new communities and in changing communities, and the longing it brings. We know of alienation that was caused by unemployment, poverty, or discrimination, and the pain it brings. We've become strangers to our relatives and foreigners to our own families. Do I not fill heaven and earth? I am the Lord your God. I have called you out from the peoples, and you shall be holy to me. We declare your praise, the one who called us out of the darkness into your wonderful light. We are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to you. <clears throat>
God, we humbly confess that we walk in the way of the indifferent who depend on the Lord, have mercy on us. Amen. Without Christ, we were strangers to the covenant of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, we who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. He is our peace. Therefore, let us affirm our faith in the triune God. Please rise. We believe in the one God. Let us in faith keep our eyes fixed on the promises of God, though we see them and greet them from a distance. We desire a better place, that is, a heavenly one. Indeed, God has prepared a city for us.
We got everybody today? Good. Good morning. Thank you. So, um, so I know in Sunday school you've been learning about the Holy Spirit, right? So one of the stories you guys read about is in the book of Acts, when the Holy Spirit first comes, it comes down and it looks like there were tongues of fire over people's heads. Do you remember that part of the story? So today, we wanted to try to visualize that. Now, though, Brian Stevens told me last week he really wanted to have fire going off during the children's moment in church. <laughs> Didn't think that maybe actual flames would be a good idea. So, hi, Mo. Sit right there. There you go. So, we have a little experiment we're going to do. It involves water and oil and some red dye. I had a terrible time finding red dye. Can you believe that? We have all kinds of, yeah, finally found it. it. Took me a while. And finally, the most important thing that makes our Holy Spirit active is Alka Seltzer. <laughs> so, of course, when I went and uh, pulled out the Alka Seltzer, I, st I started singing the song. It goes, pop, pop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. None of you know that song, nor would you care to. So, but I want to show you what this is going to do. So, we're imagining that fire coming down from heaven, and we're going to see if this is going to kind of look like a fire in a jar. Here we go. Ready? Let's give it a chance. Ooh, what's it doing? Does that kind of look like flames? Yes. <laughs> That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, it's getting better and better, isn't it, Mo? Yeah. So, so yeah. So we imagine the flames coming down. Yeah, too bad we can't have a jar for everybody, and you guys could spend the rest of the day with the flames coming down. So, <laughs> well, you know what? You can make it at home, Andrew. All you need is some cooking oil, some dye, and some Alka-Seltzer, and a little water. Um, so the thing is, the fire, though, helps us remind us of the power of the Holy Spirit. So when that happened to the disciples, it made them feel strong in their faith. It inspired them to do great things. So uh, we need to remember that, that when we feel overwhelmed by trying to do the good things that God wants us to do, we can rely on the Holy Spirit to fire us up. So, pretty good. And nobody got burned. All right. Let's have a quick prayer together. Lord, thank you for these young people and the blessing they are in our lives. We pray that you'll be with them and uh, give them the power of your Holy Spirit to do the good things in this world that you call them to do. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for coming up. I invite us now to quiet our hearts as we come before the Lord in a time of prayer. Lord, we thank you again for another beautiful fall day. They've been too many to even number this year. Lord, we're so grateful for the blessings of our lives around us, blessings of family and friends. Lord, we are a grateful, thankful people. As we gather this day, we lift up to you, though, the concerns of our hearts. We know many who are in need. We think particularly this morning of Carita Nelson and Mark Demise, who are recovering from surgery. Lord, we, we think of those in our church family who are being treated for ongoing illness. and We pray that you'll be a comfort and strength to them. Be with their family members who care for them. Lord, we pray for those who carry the burden of grief in their hearts. We pray that they will find comfort and encouragement, not only in you, but in the fellowship of this congregation who seeks to walk with them in love and grace. Lord, the needs of the world seem overwhelming to us at times, so we pray that you will remind us as we study your word today that we need to be a people of hope and a people of faith a people of courage to listen to the needs of this world and respond with your grace and your love. Draw us closer to you. 
that we may know you more. We offer these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning's reading is Mark 10, 46 through 52. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called to the blind man, Cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately, he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. It seems that there are many loud voices that demand our attention. Our lesson today is instruction for us about what voices we should be listening for. Voices that may get drowned out. Our lesson today is about the power of faith and someone who would not be silenced. His name was Bartimaeus. Blind Bartimaeus sat by the roadside in the city of Jericho, probably something he'd done his entire life. And he did what a person had to do in those times when they had a terrible disability or challenge. He begged. He was dependent, dependent upon those who would pass by who might give him money. You see, there was no social safety net, and there was no there were not laws or organized community efforts to care for people like Bartimaeus. So when he heard that Jesus was passing by, he began to call out. It's interesting. Bartimaeus' perception of Jesus stands in stark contrast to what we've been seeing throughout the Gospel of Mark as we've been preaching on it for quite a while now. He's an outsider. And it's interesting because he seems, though, as an outsider and as a blind person, to recognize Jesus better than those who are with him. He twice calls out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. I remember doing, I went to a preaching conference long ago, and it had all these heavy hitter preachers. And I'll never forget, one of the preachers was uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes. And he gave his interpretation of this. And with this deep, resonant voice, he said, this is how I imagine this went. And he just continually cried out these words till they filled the rafters of the arena we were sitting in. He got his point across. Bartimaeus was demanding to be heard. But it's so interesting that he calls out, Son of David, And that is a recognition from Bartimaeus of Jesus' messianic authority. Now, compared to his disciples' actions and requests in these preceding passages, it's amazing. In the passage right before this, in fact, we read it last week, his disciples, James and John, are trying to maneuver themselves into places of prominence among the other disciples. Jesus, they ask, give us anything we want. What do you want? To be seated right next to you in power and authority. And then for what seems like the hundredth time, Jesus tells them, you must be servant to all. The contrast in this narrative is straightforward. And the question arises, who's truly blind? Blind Bartimaeus has hope in the simplicity of the mission 
and purpose of Jesus far better than those who are closest to him and seem incapable of grasping the significance of the kingdom of God that he has come to proclaim. Now, here again, we find people trying to shoo people away. Very often, we find the disciples constantly acting as gatekeepers. Right here, it says, seems like all these people, everyone, the whole community, were trying to keep him from Jesus. These folks are acting as voices of power, gatekeepers to Jesus. They seem to think they need to be the ones in control of who gains access. They have decided that Bartimaeus is not worth his time. But to his credit, Bartimaeus refuses to be silenced and he yells even louder. And yet again, Jesus shows us that the world is a better place when all voices are heard and honored. And in particularly, and particularly those that call from the greatest need. He hears and he responds. Bartimaeus' character is pure in this account. His faith, his desire for healing, his response to what Jesus eventually does for him is very simple. And in that simplicity is power. The power of calling out in the hour of need. The power of hope and the power of faith. The narrative is straightforward. Jesus asks what he wants. And when he asks, sight is given. And Jesus says, go, your faith has made you healed, has healed you. He receives his sight. Those words are in close relationship to what happens then. He followed him on the road. The call is an invitation to come to Jesus. And when we come to Jesus, so to see. And then once we see, so that we may follow. Friends, we cannot separate out of the gospel Jesus' insistence on loving and serving those who are marginalized and powerless. If you're going to do Christian, if you're going to do church, in keeping with the kingdom of God that Jesus proclaimed here in the gospel of Mark, you must accept that part of that calling is to serve those who are in greatest need. It is too easy too easy for us to become calloused, to ignore the needs around us. We are too busy or too self-absorbed or, or maybe we're just too overwhelmed. Sometimes maybe we don't listen or don't help because we don't know if there's anything that we can do that's really going to make a difference. There's so much need. And how many of us have had that experience where we've tried to do something to help in some situation. And even though we try our best, it just doesn't seem like any difference has been made. This is when we need friends to have the faith and hope of Bartimaeus. We need to keep trying, just like he did. Because wondrous things can happen. Wondrous things can happen when we listen and respond to the voices that maybe aren't being heard. I found it interesting this summer, as all the many, many people who have come up to visit us from different places, what's been interesting is very often at the top of the list of people I know that have come up to Door County to visit, at the top of their list of things they wanted to do this trip was to go to the new watchtower at Peninsula State Park. So much credit should go to those who have worked so hard to reconstruct that landmark in our community. But even more credit needs to be given because rather than simply reconstruct what was there, the effort and the money was put forth to make that tower accessible to more, many, many more people than who could ever climb those steps before. And so they built a ramp. And so many more people of varied abilities can make that journey up through that canopy of, tree, of trees and see the world beyond. I think of Bilbo in Lord of the Rings when he climbs the top of the forest and is able to look out past all of the gloom of where he is with his companions in Mirkwood. 
When that tower opened, I confess to shedding tears of joy from a report that was made about a dear person I know, Steph Birmingham. Many of you, I think, know Steph. After driving her motorized wheelchair up that ramp, a chair that she's been in her entire life, She drove it all the way up to the top of that ramp and she was able for the first time to gaze out over that beauty of Eagle Harbor. And her response was very simple. I never dreamed I would be able to do this. With just a little vision and some money and effort, that tower made the world bigger for her. It made it bigger for a bunch of people who never dreamed that they would be able to see that. It made it better for everyone. The power of faith is to not shy away from the voices calling out in need, but through faith in action, rooted in hope, doing the work of opening up the world for others, the world can change. All of us are blessed by such work. All of the world is made better by such work, by listening to those voices that we may not pay attention to. When we honor them, we all are blessed. The world is blessed. Bartimaeus shows us, teaches us that we need to speak up in hope and have faith to follow. So as we go about our week, let's make sure our ears and and our hearts are open. Let's make sure that we have words of hope and encouragement on our lips. Most importantly, in the face of great need, let us remember that we are following Jesus. It's not by our power that we do great or good things in this world. It is, as we talked about with the children this morning, it is by the power of the gift of the Holy Spirit that we can do all things through him who loves us and gave his life for us. We can do these things because we too have joined him on the road. Amen. I invite you to please stand as we sing our closing hymn number 533.
now may the grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and abide with you, both now and forever. Amen. Amen.